Josh Swanson, Vogel Law Firm. Updating here with the Lake Sakakawea Mineral Rights case as well as uh, Mr. Swanson. Josh Swanson just got back from oil country out there in the heart of Williston. Bakken, of course, the heart of Watford City is the Bakken, I guess. But Williston used to be, and it's still just as active as ever. We'll get a update in just a second. But hot off the press, 30 minutes ago, something was filed for the Lake Sakakawea judgment or something along those lines. I didn't get time to write my notes, so let's just find out what, what happened here. You guys uh, just recently made some movement on this uh, mineral rights, Lake Sakakawea, North Dakota issue. They're literally hot off of the press uh, within the last hour. Your listeners, Jason, you and I have talked about it uh, numerous times, the mineral rights under Lake Sakakawea and, and the state's unconstitutional claim to those and how the legislature addressed it. Last session was Senate Bill 2134 that codified a new set of statutes in the North Dakota Century Code. The Supreme Court, as your listeners will recall, ruled in our favor in the Wilkinson decision back in September of 2017. And the issue has been batted back and forth with the state seeking to delay the issue and put off any sort of determination by the district court as to the application of that particular set of statutes, and, and that's what we did. We filed a summary judgment brief asking the court to decide as a matter of law that applying that set of statutes, Chapter 61-33.1 of the Century Code, in applying that, the state of North Dakota has zero right and zero claim to the mineral interests held by private landowners, including the Wilkinson family who reserved those mineral rights when the United States acquired the property for the Garrison Project in Lake Sakakawea. As, as I know you and I, you know, to, to give your listeners a refresher, because this saga has been going on for several years now, uh, the Industrial Commission last fall issued its order adopting that study done by Wank and Associates, and as part of that study, it had determined that with, with our clients, in this case, the Wilkinsons, their property was above the ordinary high water mark, and, and we're asking the district court judge to rule now as a matter of law that the state has no right to continue claiming an interest in that property. And what's the current right now as far as before this thing was issued? Was the state was going to receive the minerals, or you guys were, or where, where was it beforehand? The... The last few years, our position all along, going back to when this case was filed in 2012, is that the private landowners like the Wilkinsons have always had the minerals, and it was only the Attorney General's office and the land board that recently, around 2010, had decided to make this land grab. And the issue has been up to the North Dakota Supreme Court, which ruled in our favor, and uh, the state has persisted in, in claiming these minerals, although the Supreme Court in its decision in September 2017 in the Wilkinson case said any outcome that ends with the state having these minerals is an unconstitutional taking in violation of the United States and North Dakota constitutions. So the oil companies um, won't release the proceeds generated from these mineral acres. Okay. So not only my clients, but you have, you have you know, hundreds of mineral owners that have money tied up yeah. because the oil company says, look, until this process is, is finalized, we're not going to pay anybody. So we're moving forward on that and telling the court to order the state to drop their claim to this property. So these these the, the monies are essentially in probate or they're in just somewhere in, 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 a, in a mineral right purgatory until this thing gets resolved finally. That's yeah. Yeah, that, that that's about that, that that's the perfect word to describe that is is the purgatory, these mineral proceeds that are that are owed to my clients and many other mineral owners, they're sitting there in an account that you know my clients keep up keep racking up attorney's fees and yes. not only are they entitled to these proceeds but other families are as well but they can't touch them or get access to the proceeds until this process is is finished so yeah they're they're very much in purgatory and the state's just using state money right they're not they're not having well they use tax dollars and state money so they don't that they, they, they don't feel that pinch like your mineral right home landowners do 
That's that, right. That's exactly right. You know, the, the state has all the resources in the world to, to fight this courtesy of the great taxpayers of North Dakota, the, the private landowners, whether they're my clients or other families impacted, they've got to go out and hire an attorney. And, and I know I've mentioned it before to your listeners, but I'm looking at several bookshelves in my office that are filled with paperwork and filings from this case. So we're, we're really looking forward to finally being able to argue this to the district court in June and, and really looking forward to the state's response to see uh, whether or not they'll finally abide by the law, by what the Supreme Court said, by the statute, by the Industrial Commission's order. And, the, and really, the, to be quite frank, the damnedest thing, if the state were to dispute the findings of the Industrial Commission, if you think about it for a minute, Attorney, the Attorney General is on the Industrial Commission. He signed and approved the order that says our clients' minerals are above the high water mark and the state has no claim to them. So I, I really don't understand, and I don't think there's a legal avenue possible, which is one of the things we argue in our brief, that the state is prevented from asserting a claim to these minerals because the, the Attorney General who is filing, his office is filing these briefs trying to, to claim our client's minerals, he signed the, you know, he signed the gosh darn order saying that the minerals are above the high water marks. But that's one of the questions we're uh, anxiously awaiting to see the state's response on here. Josh Swanson, Vogel Law Firm, on the line with us here. Just a few more minutes, and I wanted to ask you, and you don't have to answer this, but I'm, I'm just curious about the elephant in the room and this is not a political program and that's why you don't have to answer this but i know vogel has lobbyists or i assume they have lobbyists or you know lobbyists so you can certainly cite a lobbyist if you feel it's a political question the north dakota gop prides themselves on being uh conservative republicans and and state state stay out of my checkbook and and yada yada type thing where are they at on this? I mean, it just it just seems like so counterintuitive to what they openly brag is their ideology. Are you following me on this? I'm I'm not trying to make this political, but the but they're the ones who brag about it. Yeah, and I, and I you know I'm happy to answer the question. And as far as the the ideology and the conservative nature of the state, you're you're exactly right. That that's exactly right. And. I would have hoped that the, the, I'll start by saying this, Jason, the legislature in passing Senate Bill 2134 several years ago recognized that there was a wrong that needed to be made right, and, and we're thankful for the state legislators for doing that, and we're appreciative of Governor Burgum signing that legislation and making it retroactive, and uh, the process that has played out since, I, I will say that the land board has been more cooperative and, and we agree the the land board's brief in the Sorum versus Nelson case where Representative Nelson challenged the constitutionality of Senate Bill 2134, the state in that case opposed that particular challenge and argued that the legislation was constitutional and we, we certainly appreciate the land board taking that position and that's one of the things we cite in our, our recent brief filed today with the district court in our case is that in the Sorum and, and Nelson case versus the state, the state agrees with us. They take the position that we're taking, and, and part of our argument is the state can't have it both ways. And so uh, when you talk about the, uh, the elected officials in statewide government, I, I would hope that uh, in this particular situation they'll say enough is enough. I really don't know the attorney general. His You would... Given the the significance of this case and the fact there were hundreds of millions of dollars tied up and there are thousands of North Dakotans whose private property rights are impacted, I would like to think that the Attorney General would, would take an interest in this particular case and direct his office because at the end of the day, it's, it's like that old Harry Truman sign that was on his desk, the buck stops here. I would like to think the Attorney General would direct his office and say, look, the order is final. Enough is enough. We need to respect that process and let this family have the finality and the outcome they're entitled to under the statute and to direct 
the attorneys in this particular case to, to drop their claims to these private property. But, you know, it's, it's, it's frustrating to me that my clients have had to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars fighting for something that's always been theirs, and there hasn't been more of a, um, a stronger response. And I understand administrations come and go, and, and you know, legislatures change every two years. This is really on the Attorney General, and I would love to visit with him about this, about finality in resolution, and, and we've made that invitation before. We've been very direct in our communications to the AG's office, and and right now I hope that, you know, you talk about private property rights and uh, the Fifth Amendment of the United States Constitution and Article One, Section 16 of the North Dakota Constitution, and, and respecting respecting those because at the end of the day, you know, those those two sacred protections are about individual liberty and individual rights against the intrusions from government. And, and that's that's what this all comes down to. And it's not really a complicated issue. So I, I hope it's my sincerest hope that that our elected officials on the statewide level. Um, finally come around on this but um if if they just kick the can down the road or ignore it that's that's my biggest concern and i think the reality of the situation is that it's gotten this far and and i fear that the attorney general is just going to do the same thing he's been doing um we'll see how the land board responds to it but i i I understand that the question and it's it's incredibly frustrating and and not I mean, it's frustrating for me as an attorney who cares about his clients and who has to see his clients go through the hell that my clients have been through. But I, I, I don't think any of us can really understand and appreciate when you're a, a, a citizen who's paying taxes and has had this property in their land going back to world right after World War One, to have the state come in and take that and to have individuals and state government just sit idly by while you're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to protect something that's always been in your family. There's something that's just not right with that. There's something that's deeply troubling and deeply upsetting. And and I would ask your listeners to this program just to put themselves into the shoes of those families that have been impacted by this, that have had to have spent the monies and resources in the last 10 years that my clients have. And, And if it can happen to them, it can certainly happen to anybody when, when there's that sort of um, lack of accountability from certain levels of our government. So, um, you know, whether, whether that's uh, taking on your question head, not, uh, head on or sidestepping it, um, that, that's, that's where I guess my take on the situation is.